Is that him? If it is, our work here is done. Who's this? He's a LN. Chest wound, but his airway's intact. He's still breathing. Holloway, for one reason or another, has taken a shine to this particular Afghani national, Qasem, and he gets brought in by Roback because he's injured. He's got shrapnel in his chest, and Holloway treats him, and he kind of discharges himself and gets lost. The LN you brought in the other day left recovery in bad shape. If he doesn't get brought back to me and put on a massive dose of antibiotics, he's gonna die. The good-looking kid? He's my patient, and I'm responsible for him. Holloway knows that if anybody can find an Afghani national in the village and get him to the base, it's Roback. The Afghan village, well, that was one of the things that I really was a challenge for me. It's in Afghanistan, it is a dusty mess, and it's a rural place. You make this puzzle of very limited pieces, colors, and shapes, but then suddenly you'll have an accent of a color of a woman's burqa walking away, or you'll have a carpet that's being washed or drying outside, and just gave it this very poor but dignified look. One of the things that I loved the most was Kasim, who was one of our characters, their parents used to run a school, and they've hidden the cave under their house to save all of the books. We essentially find this underground library where the family made this hideout, I think they were saying during the Russian invasion. The kids end up becoming very well educated because of all these books that the parents insisted that they would read. So it's a lovely twist again to our story where you just don't know what is gonna be at the end of the tunnel, and thankfully it's not, you know, something horrible. What happened here? Suicide bombing at a wedding. Look, we're looking for a patient called Kasem. Do you have anybody here by that name? You are kidding me, right? I got him! Roback finds Kasem in a hospital that is lacking in all the resources you really need to save people's lives. They find him essentially dying, and we get him on antibiotics, and we're able to take care of him in a way that they can't. Action! Still in pretty bad shape. I'll take it from here, Sergeant. Let's get him on the table. It's funny because in the scene, uh, he's a little woozy on drugs, <laughs> but he does have enough energy to give her a little joke. You were right. I was not ready to leave. It is possible you may know more about medicine than I do. <laughs> Wanna get high? Robux not my type. What is your type? Someone I come across when I'm not juggling this number of limbs on a daily basis. That's a scene that I that I really enjoy. Like you're in the army, you're not supposed to be smoking pot and they're here they are. Roback and Sasquatch are nothing alike. How'd you end up cut between them? Yeah, that scene was really exciting. Like, first time I read it, I was like, oh, snap, they actually get to, like, interact. OK, cool. Because <laughs> it is always one of those things, like, if there's a bunch of men and then women, it's like, you know, sometimes women characters in a mostly male show aren't going to be together all the time. It's kind of, like, used as an enemy thing. And I'm happy that that's not the way that this went. So why do we always fall for men who remind us why we hate our fathers? Oh, I love my father. I'd be lucky to end up with someone as good-hearted and honest as him. You suck as a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm used to being around guys. This feels too weird. Just getting to kind of be like, listen, this is my past trauma I'm coming here with. This is what I'm here to work through. That feels great. Now I know where to go, you know, in the next episode. But also just that opportunity to see that we don't have to be enemies. We yeah. can both be here to support one another. This is the beginning. We don't know where this is going to go. But so far, it looks like they're going to become really good friends. 